and welcome to another edition of Desert Empire Vibe. I'm your host, as always, Andrew Caravella here, bringing you some of the hottest and the latest and greatest today in Southern California region for entertainment. We do a spotlight on musicians, actors, public figures, athletes, you name it, we do it. Except librarians, I can't. Not hey, no, 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 not so, Unless it's a good book. Ding. I write my own jokes. All right, anyways, today on the show, we have a local actor who's actually... Is, is this going to be your first full-length feature that you're doing? No, no, no. Not my first okay. full-length. So he's the seasoned actor that just lives in the area. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Barrett. Hello, everybody. So, Michael, you are you are an actor. Yes. That That is like, if I get your driver's license, occupation's actor, right? No, well, not necessarily, no. Um, actually, for a living, I work as a behavior therapist. Um, oh. I work with autistic kids, mostly. That is definitely acting. Hey, that there is acting involved in that. Because yeah. working with these kids, I mean, sometimes i got to work on story time. You know? Who else than an actor to give them a children's book reading and that sort of thing? What is that like working with like kids that have autism and stuff? Is it do you sometimes feel like because I do like because they're kids, so you have to entertain. You know, you kind of have to have a certain persona with it. I I would imagine it's kind of like acting. Do you feel like sometimes that can be even more challenging than a, like a really like deep monologue? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Because I've been acting longer than I've been doing that. So um, in doing that, I work with a lot of behaviors and there's behavior plans set up for them and. Um, got to get them into learning and that sort of thing. And there's no one better than an actor, I think, to really present them with, you know, great job, that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I, have, I have fun doing that. It really is, really is a very re rewarding job. That's awesome. Thank okay. you. Yes. See, that wasn't, that wasn't rehearsed no. at all. So I just found that out here on the spot. That's hey, cool. There you go. So that's what I do for an actual living. That's Every cool. now and then I actually get paid for acting, but <laughs> that's when I do. <laughs> so. so let's go to the scripted material now. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> So, okay, you just wrapped, I think, two different productions this year yourself, yes. right? Yes, yes. The first one was The Outsiders. Um, great production. Um, I did that show, and we did, this wasn't rehearsed either. Um, I did that show because um, my very first role was as Ponyboy Curtis in the, in the Outsiders, and that was... That's the Stay Golden Ponyboy, yeah, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And that was, this is scary, 24 years ago. 20, 24 years ago. I was a freshman in high school when I played that role. So I heard they were doing it at the, at the Center for the Arts, and I contacted the director, and I said, hey, you know what? I played Pony Boy. I'm gonna stay gold, and uh, so put me in as the doctor. You know, I'm in like I was in like three scenes, real briefly, and I worked alongside a great group of young kids that really took the show away, and it was a great successful run. Uh, great houses that were in there, and audiences were very receptive to it. So I was very, very happy to do that show. Very good. Yes. Okay, and then what was the other one that you wrapped this year? Um, that was Death by Chocolate. And Death I, by Chocolate. Yes, and uh, that was a very fun leading role that I took on in that one. Um, murder mystery, comedy, whodunit, and everything. And uh, that was very well attended, a lot of laughs, a um, lot of support behind that one from the audiences and everything. So um, that was a very successful play. I was very happy with it. So do, doing stage acting, but you also do film acting as well. Yes. Because you have a, a full-length feature film that you're shooting this summer here, yes. actually. Yes, yes. I begin shooting my scenes on Friday. On Friday? Yes. Um, and uh, they, they began shooting June 11th, and I was already in uh, production for Death by Chocolate when that was going on, so I told the directors, you know, I got the show coming up those two weekends, I can't shoot. They said, well, we'll shoot your stuff later. So uh, as an actor that's, you know, out there and stuff, like, how was the audition process for this, you know? For or, the film? Or were you handpicked specifically? No, no, no. Um, well, actually, for The Outsiders and Death by Chocolate, what I did was I, did, I went to both auditions on the same night because they were happening on the same night. Oh, so wow. I went from one room and, like, like the, Chris, the, uh, the director for The Outsiders said, let me just read you the doctor real quick. So I was in there for, like, five minutes, read that, and I was like, okay, cool. Then I went to Death by Chocolate, which was right next door, and so I read for that one. And the director actually kind of handpicked me for that one. As soon as I walked in the door, he goes, I want you to read for Stone, which is my character. So, and he just kept me reading that, and so I think he he kind of, um, I mean, I didn't get the role without reading for it. Right. But, uh, but for the for the full length feature film that that you're shooting, was was that an audition process as well? Yes, it was. Um, for that one, they wanted a monologue. They, they wanted you to come in with a monologue, and that was it. Oh, your own so, material. Your then. own material. You picked your own monologue to come in with, and I picked a monologue from uh, Streetcar Named Desire from a show that I did. I cheated because I was so busy with doing <laughs> the other project. So I, I took a monologue that I already performed previously and um, just gave that to them. They worked with me a little bit on that, and I got the got the callback. And then the callback I actually read. Um, they gave me sides for the callback, so I prepared those. And I came in, and they actually wanted me cast in the film in a somewhat smaller role, um, but they had me pegged for uh, a different role altogether. And then um, they saw me read that one with a certain kind of an edge. They wanted 
for another character that was actually a little bit bigger of a part. So uh, they ended up casting me in that role instead. How do you, because I know, I, I don't really do a whole lot of acting. I, singing, we do it all day long. But with acting, I still go into auditions and I get sweaty armpits and stuff. Really? Like, Do you get the nervous thing ever anymore at this point in your in your life when you do auditions? Not really, no. No? No. It's, it's all part of the business, I figure, you know? And you're not going to get every one. I got lucky because I actually got... Three auditions and I got cast three in a row. And I was like, wow, that's great. It's so it like, makes you feel good as an actor, but it definitely doesn't happen all the time. No, no, you're happen. having a good year. It yes, looks like, yeah, it's been definitely a good year. That's good. All right. So when did your desire for acting start? Did it start when you were a wee lad? Was it something in high school? Like, oh, like yeah. where did where did this all, where did the bug start for you in your life? I was a wee lad. <laughs> I was a wee lad. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, ever since I was a kid. I loved movies. Loved movies when I was a kid. Do you remember, I, always, I like to ask people this, uh, okay. the first movie they ever saw in a movie theater? Ooh, jeez. I'm going to think about that one. Uh, you know what? This is going to sound weird. Okay. Okay. Superman 3. Oh, wow. Which was not the greatest Superman movie, but yeah, because I remember back in the day, that was close around the time when VHS was hot. And my parents, What's a VHS? Exactly, I'm kidding. right? I'm kidding. Right. I'm well, kidding. back then, VHS was that was that was the vibe. That was VHS. That, that was the vibe. That oh, was the vibe. This and, guy's got to write our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was everything. And my parents um, decided to get you know like, why are we going to spend all that money in the movie theater when we can get on VHS and we can all watch it? So my parents didn't want to take me much to the movies, but my uncle Mike back in the day, he was like, you know what? I'm going to take you to go see the new Superman movie, and uh, I saw that with them, and I was just blown away by it. I was like, wow, big screen on sound and all that. Even this is early 80s given, but uh, yeah. Do you remember the first role you did like acting or theater growing up? Okay. First, mm. <laughs> I played a, I played a bee when I was in like, you played a bee? Grade. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to stand on one foot, rub my hands. And I, I couldn't stand on one foot. I kept shaking. I, I actually kind of ended up getting all the la like laughs and took away from all the other kids doing their whatevers. I don't remember the whole play exactly, but I remember I had to be a bee and rub my hands together and I was just like, Gee. and I kept, <laughs> was, oh yeah, yeah, it was good times. Did you uh, did you grow up here in Southern California? Southern California, yes. I grew up in the Upland area. Um, I went to school in Laverne and Claremont. I uh, went to college at Cal State Fullerton. Oh, okay. So I lived in Orange County for about five years, five, six years. Uh, and then I, I came out here and found my calling uh, basically working with with uh, the disabled kids. And oh, and, yeah, you've and, been and doing adults. that ever since. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing that. Yeah, I've been doing that for, oh my goodness, how many years now? 12 years? Yeah, 12 years? 12 wow. Years? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you think the most difficult part of acting is for both film and stage? Because trying to, I've, I've, I've tried to teach kids like that do stage acting, like how to do things on film, and it's, you got to kind of rework them and, and make them see how things are done from a director standpoint. Sure. So I do know that there are some obstacles that they come across doing on camera versus on stage. So what do you think, I guess, first, the most, the more difficult aspects of acting are for when you're an actor on stage versus in front of a camera? That's a good question. Um, well, on stage and film, it's completely different. I mean, I'm not sure how coarse I can get in this, but there's a quote by Susan Sarandon that I absolutely love, and I've, I've just got to say it. Um, she said that um, uh, theater is like sex and film is like masturbation. Okay. Okay. All right. You see that? Sorry, I had to okay. visualize okay. in my so, head. I'm sorry if that's too coarse for some of your views, yeah. but that's, you know. Okay. But I love that quote from Susan Sarandon because there's a lot of truth to that. And because, I mean, with, with in theater, you're with the audience right there, right? I mean, it's all happening live. It's all right there, you know, in front of in front of everybody. It's a moment that you're sharing with the audience, and it's live. It's right there, and everybody's in it together, you know? And with film, you have to practice and in film, to make it you, perfect. In, yeah, film, you practice to make it perfect, you know? But I mean, um, and you get many different tries at it, so it's like, you know, and it's just <laughs> you and the camera. That's it, you know? And you, and you do take after take after take and, and until it's right. So... I guess you could kind of see the, the, the comparison with yeah. that. But, you know, I mean, let's just say both are fun. You know, so hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I got way off course there. Oh, my gosh. You can edit that out yeah. if you want. I don't know. Thank you for joining us for this <laughs> after school special. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but in theater as an actor, um, it's 
it, usually you can get away with more on stage. Um, you can make it bigger. You can make it a little grander. Um, but in film, it's a lot simpler. In film, a raise of an eyebrow can be overacting. You know, so there's that. As you raise your eyebrow. As I raise my eyebrow. Yeah. <laughs> so I just overacted right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yes, uh, typically film is is simpler and it's more direct to the point kind of a thing. Um, in some aspects, a little more a little more realistic, I guess you could say. Sometimes in some moments. Um, and in theater, you're allowed to get away with things. Um, but all together as an actor, I would say um, the challenges involved would be pretty similar to both mediums, I would say, easily. Um, it's really trying to find the right, the right intent for the character, the right approach to the character, and making sure that lines up with what's written on the page. And that comes down to script analyzation and everything like that. Um, I mean, the director I worked with on Death by Chocolate, um, I saw the character a completely different way. He saw the character a completely different way. But between the both of our visions with what we wanted for the character, we just sort of meshed, meshed them together, you know, and sort of made sense out of it overall. And I, I was very happy with, with how it came out overall, too. How many productions a year do you think you do with acting, both film and and on stage. So lately, last year I did a short film uh, called The Spider and the Fly. It's on YouTube. I honestly didn't care how it was edited too much, but it's it's on YouTube. It's called Spider and the Fly. And uh, um, that one was shot last last August. And so I'm doing this one this year. So I've been doing the last few years, about a film a year. Um, and then uh, theater-wise, I'm averaging about two, three a year, something around there. Oh. So this year I've got, uh, I've already got three um, down. So for theater, right. so yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Hey, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we got more with actor Michael Barrett here on Desert Empire Vibe. We gotta pay our bills, don't go away, and we'll be right back. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to The Vibe. Desert Empire Vibe. I'm your host, Andrew Caravella. You can now stream our show on Roku via the live stream app, keyword KVVB. Um, yeah. All right. Did you know that? We're on Roku. On Roku? Yeah, we're new media over. We're live streaming. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So. Hoping the viewers are liking it. Right? Yeah. No, so far they have. Okay. Yeah, they haven't said, pull the plug yet. Okay, good. So. Good. But who knows? You could ruin it for me tonight. Hey, all right. <laughs> well, at least I'll do something. I'll there you go. Hey, so. Hey. So what are some of the things that are happening? Because in the High Desert, High Desert Center of the Arts, yes. you, you spend a lot of time there. I mean, that's like that's like our Hollywood up here, right? That's, right, yeah. That's like the mecca to find people that are like SAG actors as well as non-union. Sure. Filmmakers, singers, dancers. It, it's just, it just it's, it's a hub. It is. And it kind of just collects them all. Yes, I would say so. Well, I guess you would say they're in competition with the college, maybe. But, you know, I, I, I would think that it's the hub. I consider it's my hub. At least that's right. That's right. I do my theater. Tell us a little bit <clears throat> about the High Desert Center of the Arts, because I don't. I don't think some of the community uh, up here are really aware of the history of it, what it used to be, where you know what what kind of shows come out of there. Well, it was originally a USO building, um, and I know that uh, it was that until nine, 1950s, I believe, and then um, it sat like as a it became a basketball court after that, and sat as a different I don't know uh, multi opportunity place. For a while until finally, I think it was in the early 70s that they, I think, early 70s, mid 70s, that they actually uh, kind of put like a stage in there. And they didn't actually do a whole reworking of the theater, I think, until somewhere in the mid 80s, somewhere around there. And then now it's the theater that it is now with the full proscenium and um, the, the seats about 170, I think, is what it is. And um, yeah, so. Good to see the shows when they take off there. We really feel the good houses in there. And what kind of productions <clears throat> come out of there? I mean, is it literally anything from, you know, little kids to senior citizens? Yeah, sure. Um, the senior citizens love to come out on the Sunday matinees, of course. And um, it, it, it houses all kinds of different productions for all different sort of audience members. Um, I would say that uh, if you were to look at a lineup for the year, there's definitely a show that somebody would want to see that would be on there. Like any audience member. Okay. There's a, a gallery, I've, I've been told, also yes. in there. Yes, there's a gallery on the outside of the theater, some, some also local uh, artists that are putting their, their for sale for anybody who wants to buy them. 
Um, or if you want to just look at the gallery, you could do that as well. Um, yeah, it's a, be it's, a, it's a beautiful space. I really love that theater. What do you think your biggest struggle as an actor is? I guess what I'm trying to ask is your weakness. The thing that, because as artists, we're always trying to better our crafts. Yes. And, you know, we can, we can sell out the crowd. We could have a standing ovation. We could bow and say thank you very much and go off camera and look in the mirror and be like, oh, oh I suck. Yes. Why did I do that? Yes. So what is it with you, your little tick? What, what's your thing that you always have to work on? You know, I think I think for me, it's kind of going back to what I said earlier. I, I typically sometimes will do too much. I'll, I'll I'll do more than I need to. Do overact. I'll overact. You'll Jim Carrey. I'll it. Jim Carrey it. Or yes. Will Ferrell it. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's why the director, of the, the the last show I did, um, he would have this thing where he'd say, "Michael, half that." <laughs> yeah, and I'd be like. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try that again. You know, so um, that's that's my thing. But another good director that I worked with in college, um, a gentleman by the name of Dean Hess, Dean, great, probably the greatest director I've ever worked with. He always said that it's much easier to bring an actor down than to have to bring them up. So, and I've, as a director myself, I've seen that. <laughs> so it's. Um, oh, so you do more than just act. You do the directing. Oh yes, stuff also. yes, yes. I've been directing for years. Um, I've I'd taken classes for that at Cal State Fullerton. And I've directed, oh, over a dozen shows now. Um, what was the last show you directed? last show I directed was the Burlesque Show in January. Um, I've been involved in that show, which you did that show in 2000. I did in 07. So that's how I met you. You yeah. know, it's, it's really funny, uh, off topic. I, I don't know why I'm going to say this here on national television. But um, that was, I, I did a drag number for that. Yes. And on the Sundays, when the senior citizens would come for the matinee, totally sold out. They loved the drag number. Uh -huh. Ironically, when I was becoming a member of the Screen Actors Guild, the gig that I had to do was drag. Nice. Drag for SAG. That's, that's the joke that my friends always have. So awesome. it kind of follows me wherever I go. I do not make <laughs> a very attractive woman. Uh, I think when I did the burlesque show, I did. I had brunette hair. Yeah. And when I did uh, the SAG show, it was. Uh, I was a blonde. I was like a Paris Hilton in like a purple evening gown. Right. And yeah, I'm ugly. I'm an ugly. <laughs> I'm an ugly woman. What can I say? I'm an ugly woman. Well, hey, that's getting comedy to it. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Yes. So if I it's fail in life, I could just do drag for the rest of my life in Reno or something. Right. Because I don't think Vegas would take me. <laughs> you gotta be. You gotta be a hot. You gotta be a hot woman. Hey, no, not necessarily. They have comedy shows in Vegas. So you could do that. Yeah, thing. I guess I could. You could. I could. Or just be a Dane Cook impersonator. <laughs> right. That's true. I could do that. Yeah. Right. Do you yeah. so, do you ever get the look alike? Does Does anyone say you look like somebody? Oh, geez. I've gotten Antonio Banderas. <laughs> yeah. Don't see it going. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. I got. There was one girl in college that was convinced I was. I was. I was Antonio Banderas, and I used to do the impression of him too. So, but anyway, uh, which other one do I get? Uh, Steven Seagal. I've got Steven. Steven Seagal. You Steven don't got the Seagal. chin, man. You don't got the uh, chin. I mean, not the chin. Um, let's see. You know what? I actually got one time, and I was with my buddy, and he was like, "That Jim Carrey." I actually got Jim Carrey one time. I was like. Mm. No. Yeah, I don't know. No. You know no. what? Looking on the monitor here, I know, I know we have we don't have the HD look here on our monitor. I'm looking at I, I can see Seth MacFarlane. Really? Okay. Do you see it? I could see that. Yeah, I yeah, could, Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane. He's gotta I cut the that. hair a little. Yeah, yeah. Be a little more perverted. Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I could see that. Yeah. So, you know, if you fell in life, I gave you your next career. That's right. I could uh I could pretend to be Seth MacFarlane and <laughs> find autographs for money or something. I don't know. <laughs> do you do impersonations? Uh, not really. Not kind really. Of. Uh, well, Antonio Banderas. I did the impression, the impersonation uh, for. Give for, us, for, give for, us Antonio. No, not yet. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> oh, Puss in Boots. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I think it was Desperado. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one. Um, Beavis and Butthead. I'll do that. Okay, let's hear. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, 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 hot. <laughs> hot, hot. Are we really doing Beavis and Butthead right now? <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, That's I'm done with the presentation. Like, okay. I, I, I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is your? I usually say these for musicians, but you do live stage, so I think it's. I think it. It also falls under the the tent of Andrew. Um, okay. What is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you during a live performance? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Or some, because it sounds oh. like you have a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last show, we had an actor that had really bad gas. 
And, and Shut up. Yeah, not kidding. So yeah, he let one fly on stage. I'm not sure if the audience heard it or not, but it was pretty funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Ha have you ever, yeah. I can hear them laughing yeah, in the back right, right now. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, ha it, it have is, you ever it, it tripped on stage? It was pungent. Hmm? Have you ever tripped on stage? Have I ever tripped on stage? Uh, yes, I've done that, but I've caught myself. Have you ever, have you ever, because the lights are super bright, so have you ever almost fallen off the stage? No. You've never done that? No, no, no. And luckily, no, because that's a high stage that's, that's, that's out there. So that's, that's very fortunate that I haven't fallen off that stage. And, uh, but I've done like did good sword choreography, never tripped there, and that kind of stuff too. And um, yeah. Wait, swords? You mean yes. you've, you've, you've acted with swords? Oh, yes. That's like combat, that's yeah. stage combat, right? Oh, yes, that's fun. Isn't that hard though? Like you have to have everything down right. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the best thing about that too is like your enemy on the stage is really in life, like your partner. Like, I know what you're gonna do. It's like, you know, you're, you're, you have a, the close relationship in that play with the person you're sparring against and supposed to hate in the, in the actual play, that sort of thing. Uh, but actually a play that I wrote called Untitled, um, I had to include like a, like a 10 minute fight sequence. Had guns, swords, everything. The sword sequence alone was something around eight minutes or so. So yeah, I love, I love uh, stage combat. It's very fun. All right, we're gonna play a game because you're an actor. Okay. It's in your improv, you know. Okay, okay. You're seasoned. Uh, it's called it's called random questions. Oh, okay. It's one of my favorites. It's it's a it's a signature of mine. Pretty much, I'm going to ask you a bunch of random questions, and you have to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind as an answer. It's very dangerous. So if you're okay. up for the challenge, we'll play. <sighs> okay. You already heard what I've given, so. All right, here we go. <laughs> random replies. questions. Favorite color? Blue. Nope. Green. <laughs> Damn. Favorite vegetable? Uh, mm, broccoli. Mm. Okay. Best sports team? Mm, Angels. Worst sports team? Uh, Braves. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Favorite actor? Uh, what's this? Uh, I'll say Al Pacino. Worst actress of the year? Fail, I fail, 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 fail. I don't like doing worse. Uh -huh. Worse isn't nice. Last thing you heard on your iPod or MP3 player. Oh, uh, geez. That was late last night, right before I went to sleep. Uh, I believe it was Plus from Triple Pilots. Darn, I thought it was going to be something embarrassing. No, no. Yeah. yeah. I did. I, I interviewed a boy bander one time, and it was Mariah Carey. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. He was actually super embarrassed. He was bright red. I was like, just say it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I honestly don't... On my iPod, I wouldn't really have anything that embarrassing. If so, I'd let you know. Let me see. Anything embarrassing. I'll find something. Yeah. You got links to your stuff? How do we find you? How do we see some of the things that you've done on stage or on film? Like um, I'm on YouTube. Um, there's some there's some stuff there. There's a scene, this scene that I did in Tree Crying Desire. Actually, I mentioned that one before. That one's on there. Uh, it's under Michael Barrett, and it's got a uh, uh, drama mask and a comedy, comedy mask on there. I've got how many followers? I've got like... 30 followers or We're going to get you 35 tonight. Hey, all right. Tonight. Yes. Instagram, yes, you. Snapchat, you do any of that? No, no. Facebook, I do Facebook. And okay. other than that, that's that's pretty much my thing. Vimeo. Yeah. Are any of your, your videos on Vimeo? Nope. Nope. We got to. We got to. I've done Vimeo. I should do that. You should. You As should an that. actor, it's huge. Yeah. So, well, we got to get people to the High Desert Center of the Arts off 8th Street in Victorville, right? Yes. To see some of the productions that you've been a part of. Yes. They're, they're online. Um, you go to www.highdesertcenterforthearts.com. And, um, or if you are interested in the theater company I do a lot of things with, that's at www.hdtheaterartsguild.org. Okay. So and those there. are coming up on the screen right now. You can find Yay. out more about Michael Barrett and some of the th other things that he's got going on. We'll try to bring you back when you get a little further on your new film. Sure. Talk thank about you. It. Yes. So, Please visit the set. The directors want to see him. Absolutely. Great. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Andy Caravella for The Vibe. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.